Good morning, Gary from g and Honeybees back again with another video. Uh, this video is going to be twofold. Uh, because of the sudden uh, dearth that we've had here in the in September, today is the 6th of September, and uh, because of the sudden dearth, I've been uh, feeding the bees sugar water, and I want to tell you a little story about how I feed them. Now these are 3D printed, uh, what they call rapid feeders, and you can see there's a cup in the center here uh, that keeps the bees from getting out into the sugar syrup and drowning. And I just put this particular one because I 3D printed it uh, will hold about three cups of sugar water, and they will just take that. They'll come up from the center. They'll suck up some sugar water and go back down through the center and deposit it in the honeycomb. Um, when I first started beekeeping, my first September, I was told, got to feed them sugar water. And not knowing what I know now, uh, because I was new to the whole process, was that I actually practically killed a hive because I was feeding them too much sugar water. Um, what had happened was I was feeding, and at the time I didn't have these uh, 3D printed things, I was just using an inverted jar, and uh, so I was giving them like half a gallon every three or four days, and I didn't realize that the bees were taking all that sugar water and filling the brood chamber until it was basically too late. My last inspection of that one hive, um, at that first winter, uh, when I looked, there was only one frame of brood. The rest of it was all sugar water. And so they didn't survive the winter because even though they had enough food, there was not enough bees. So now I regulate how much sugar water I give these girls because now I understand that they just take most of that and they just store it, you know, in the comb. So, um, that's about my feeding. Um, now about the dearth. The dearth has been kind of powerful this year. It was sudden and powerful. And the bees have been robbing each other something fierce. Now they seem to have settled down here in my yard, but down in Norman's yard, he's nearly lost three hives. One hive is completely dead uh, because it was robbed out. The second hive it was robbed out. The bottom two uh, mediums completely empty. And the third medium we found the queen and probably a cluster of 40 or 50 bees. So I took them and I put them in a nuke. And then I introduced some extra bees to it to help them out. And I checked them this morning. Now, I don't have them here. I have them someplace else away from the big hives because they're still a weak hive and the bees will just decimate them. So, um, how I introduce bees to a nuke is I have this box and this is just what I call a feeder box. And in the bottom here you'll see there's a, a vent hole with a screen over it and this is normally where I would have my sugar dish right here and that's over the access hole but when I introduce bees I have this little piece of plywood it's got some hardware cloth on it and a string attached to it and on the bottom I've got a little bit of wax beeswax just so that stays in place and a string attached to it so I can move it after the bees get used to the new queen. I might put a bit more on there. Just take a little bit of that and put it in the corners and just stick that down there if it'll stick. I just don't want it to slide around. So how this works is I shake some bees in here. I've got a couple of pieces of pollen patty in there for them and I've got a plastic lid with some 
wax cappings from from the last time we extracted honey and there's a bit of honey in it so what I'll do is I'll shake two or three frames of bees in here and then I'll put the cover on it close them up strap it down and then I can take that and set it right on top of the nuke and I believe how it works is sort of like a newspaper combine where the bees get used to the scent of the, the new queen over a period of time. Uh, right now the bees will be trapped in here so they can't get down at the queen, they can't get at the other bees until I move that piece of plywood with the screen in it. And from my past experience this works really well. Uh, the bees sort of cover these holes and they fan and they fan really well and that just spreads the queen's pheromones up in this box really easily and uh, once they quiet down somewhat then I know it's time to take the string give it a yank and uh, move the screen board out of the way of the access hole and the bees will just go down into the box and become part of the hive. So now the reason I'm adding, I've got it here now, is I've got to add more bees to that nuke that I rescued from one of Norman's hives uh, because the queen is in there laying, and she's laying pretty good, but she's only laying patterns of about that big because that's all the bees that are in there to cover it, and time is getting on here it'll be the end of September before anything starts to hatch um, so I want to give her some more bees so that she'll have um, more coverage and she can uh, build up the the hive with winter bees or the nuke and then I'm going to try to overwinter them just in the nuke so um, I want to take bees out of this box and the reason being is when I brought them back from the bush, they had uh, honey bound right down to the second box. And they were starting to make queen cups and they were making drone cells, which is a sign of swarming. Um, so there's a reason, twofold reason to look in this box today. One is to see um, if there's any more queen cups or any more drone cells. The other one is I added this third 10 frame box in here. Uh, it was just it was drawn just drawn comb, and I want to see how much sugar water they've stored in that because I'm pretty sure they will have that stored full of the sugar water I've been feeding through the rapid feeder. So let me get uh, my suit on here and get set up, and uh, I'll be back in a minute, and we'll open this hive and shake some bees. So I've got the inner cover off. This box is going to be nothing but food, so I'm not even going to disturb them. I'm just going to oh, the wasps are just trying to. Oh no, that's a honeybee. I'm trying to get this box off here. Yeah, that's got some weight to it. That's winter food. Now this is the box it was all empty so I'm just going to pull maybe pull a center frame or two out here let's just move them over mm. and this may be where I'm going to take shake the bees off of so I know I don't get the queen camera's not going to pick that up, but this has got sugar water in it. It's got a bit of weight to it. So they are storing sugar water up here. Same there.
right, so let's lift this box off. where I found the queen cups. So that's got honey in it. That's winter food. I can't keep this open too long because the yellow jackets are still here in great numbers. Oh, it smells like honey. Pretty good. That's got sugar water in it by the looks of it. But I don't see. Now that's where some of the queen cells were last week. So I don't see any there. It looks like a good population in this hive. I've noticed that. Um, Oh yeah, look at the brood here. All right, so she's back up here. Oh yeah, there's brood here too. Notice over the last few days, I've come out here and there's just been flocks of or swarms of bees out in the front. Oh, no queen cells there, and no drones. There have been flocks of bees out in front of this hive from all the bees hatching, and that's all full of like day-old eggs down in there. The sun's not at the right position for the camera to pick that up. There's also day old eggs in there too, some newly hatched larvae. It might be a good frame to shake into that other box because it's nurse bees. Shaking that one in there. <laughs> so we know she's there for the time being. So let's take. Come on, girls. So I can get the lid back on it. Let's take this one. Double check. Got a gentle shake in there. to make sure she's still on this frame. Come on girls. You always gotta be under my fingers. Here in the 
sun. There she is there. She's back on this frame. So I'm going to take this other frame here. in there. Alright, so doesn't look like the swarming is continuing. And I'm pretty sure I got a good number of nurse bees off those two frames. Might take one more. Just just for an added bonus. I still see the odd drone in here too. Just double check. Just double check, just in case. Just trying to sweep some of them back in there so that Alright, so let's put these back together. I don't see any swarm cells. Looks like adding that other box kind of put them back to normal. I got the uh, bees that I need for the nuke. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a ratchet strap around this box now that I've got a good bunch of bees in there. And uh, we'll take that over and I'll put it on the nuke. But I'm going to do that off camera. Wasps are just silly. Yeah, I'll do that off camera. And uh, these girls, they should find their way back to the hive. They're the ones that sort of flew out once I shook the, the other bees in there. But I can't lift that lid now because they'll just want to come out. So, um, having said that, I hope you're all doing well. 
and uh, staying safe. And I wish you all happy beekeeping. And uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon. Bye for now.